Starting Red Dead Online can be difficult. Rockstar will guide you through the initial phase and then they'll just throw you into the open world with no guidance whatsoever. And to make matters worse, the best content within the game is behind a paywall. So you will need to get at a minimum of 15 gold bars and it's likely you do not have that right at the beginning. So in this video, I'm going to guide you step by step from the moment that you start Red Dead Online to the very moment where you build up enough gold to enter into these roles and actually be successful within game. When first starting Red Dead Online, you will be met with a character customization screen and quite simply, you will customize your character. It really doesn't matter what you select it, it has no lasting effect and if you do create a character which you're not happy with, you will be given a free character reset for your appearance and then after that you will need to spend gold bars. But as long as you get something that you're happy with the first time or even second time, then you're good. You really don't want to be doing this a third time because that cuts into the amount of gold that you will have and that is crucial to this game. Once your character is customized, you will then go through the tutorial. This, yet again, you have no options. It will guide you through step by step the basis story for Red Dead Online. It will guide you through the mission select and you'll also unlock a treasure map, which really won't give you that much, but it gives you a good idea of how to start this game. And it's from this point in which you are thrown within free room. And this is where we can start being strategic about what you really should be doing. So the best content within the game comes down to the roles. This is the bounty hunter, collector, trader, naturalist, and moonshiner. Unfortunately, every single one of these roles requires you to have at least 15 to 25 gold bars to enter. And it's likely that you will not have this right at the beginning. So the first thing that you need to do is complete the main missions. There are 13 main missions in total for a land of opportunity and for every single one that you go through it increases the amount of money you can earn but more importantly it increases the amount of gold that you can earn and because this is your first time going through it you also get a first time bonus. Now every single year when I talk to first time players they're always confused with these missions because I say there's 13 but they're only able to go and play 9. So what happened to the other 4? A key point with these missions which isn't shown or talked about by Rockstar or within the tutorial is that these missions are unlocked depending on your honor level. You'll have five missions which really don't matter. You could be honorable, you could be dishonorable, or you could be right down the middle. You will be able to go through them no matter what. You will then have four missions which are honorable and then another four missions which are dishonorable. My recommendation for the first time going through these, you really should be trying to push for those honorable missions first because it's a lot easier to get these done and then become dishonorable later rather than getting the dishonorable missions done and then trying to be honorable after. Once all main missions are completed, you'll have about $1,000 and 10 gold bars. Still not enough for you to enter into your first role. This is when we'll head over to Saint Denis. In Saint Denis, you'll have an icon marked like this, and this is where you can enter into the blood money content. You'll speak to Guido Martelli and you'll have a cinematic. You can enter this entirely for free and it will unlock extra content for you to go through. Now the types of missions that you'll have are very similar to stranger missions, but they have a slightly higher payout. You can head to any stranger within the world and you'll see blood money contracts and they will give money, gold, and also Capitale. Capitale is collected and can be redeemed for opportunities later once you have enough. Unfortunately, with these opportunities within Red Dead, this is the closest we're getting to heists. At this point, the game is a complete grind. You will need to keep on going through these blood money missions, these opportunities, and also complete awards as well as daily challenges for you to build up enough gold for you to reach the ultimate goal, which is 15 gold bars so you can enter into your first role. Now, with the roles, you can go and select any one you want if there is one that you're really wanting to play. But if you want the most efficient way to go through this, the best thing that you can do is the bounty hunter first. The bounty hunter is the only role within the game that will pay actively on gold. For every mission that you complete, you will be rewarded. Whereas every other role within the game, it will only give you money and XP. 
So with this in mind, head over to Rhodes, go over to the bounty board. It will play about a free five minute cutscene and then you'll pay 15 gold bars to enter. With this, you'll get a bounty hunter license and it will unlock multiple bounty boards across the world of Red Dead. With each of these bounty boards, there will be three bounties placed. And as you're at the beginning of your journey, it really doesn't matter which one you select. But as you progress through the bounty hunter ranks, these will change to different tiers. You'll get tier one, tier two, and tier three bounties. And as you go up the tier, it will increase the amount of money, gold, and XP that you can get at the end. Unfortunately, with all missions within Red Dead, especially within Free Roam, the payout for completing is not set in stone. It's a variable based on how long it took you to complete. So the longer it takes you to complete a mission, the higher the reward will be at the end. Whereas if you completed it insanely quickly, unfortunately, you're going to get next to nothing. And if you do complete it super quick, it does mean that you'll probably get money and also XP, a very small amount, and you may not get any gold. So with these, take your time. With the Bounty Hunter, you'll also have legendary bounties. These are slightly better and also more entertaining. These have a much higher payout, but is still based on a timer. It's just a timer that you cannot see. For you to get the maximum payout for any of the legendary bounties, it takes you about 30 minutes of you being in that mission before you hit the cap, the maximum amount, and it doesn't increase any more than that. But now that you have unlocked your first role and you've selected Bounty Hunter, things get a lot easier. It should be easier for you to build to 15 gold bars again. Once you do, this is when you'll select the Collector. The Collector is the best role within the game for you to earn money. For you to start, you'll need to head over to Madame Nazar. She's in a different location every single day. You'll play a cinematic, you'll spend 15 gold, and it will give you a collector's bag. And the idea with this role is that you'll just find collectibles as you're traveling the world. But there's a much easier way. There's a link in the description down below which will take you over to this collector's map. And it'll show you every single collectible within the game and it'll change on a daily basis as the collectibles change location. If you use this instead and focus on the guaranteed sets, these are the sets which are colored white, you will be able to complete full sets which will give you the most amount of money. As you progress through the role, you will eventually need to buy into a shovel and a metal detector but they are insanely cheap and they're definitely worth getting because they'll unlock more collector sets which will give you even more money. And in all honesty, you're probably going to be able to rank up quicker within the collector than anything else. It gives you an insane amount of XP as you'll get anywhere between 100 all the way up to 300 per collectible and you'll also get 1,500 once you actually sell the set at the end. It really doesn't take long for you to go through this for you to be insanely rich. The only downside is that it doesn't give any gold the only way that you're getting gold is by ranking up your character itself and every five ranks you'll be able to unlock a treasure map my overall recommendation is for you to play the bounty hunter and the collector at the exact same time head over to a bounty board select a bounty find that bounty put them on the back of your horse and then just spend remaining minutes that you have left as part of that mission finding nearby collectibles this way you're progressing the amount of gold that you can earn and also the amount of money. Eventually you'll build up enough gold again to go into the next roles. My recommendation is that you push for 15 gold bars to buy the trader, then push for 25 gold bars to get the naturalist and then another 25 gold bars after that to finally push for the moonshiner. The reason for this is because for you to get the moonshiner, you first must have the trader, but for you to optimize the trader, you kind of need to have the naturalist. So it makes sense for you to go in this order. The trader can be your first passive role. It is still incredibly grindy, especially right at the beginning. You will need to hunt animals for materials and then use those materials to resupply the trader. But once it's set up, you can let that go in the background and you'll be able to go and do your own thing. You'll You'll come back 50 minutes later and you should have 25 goods. You just need to keep on making sure that there's enough materials and you keep on doing resupply missions. The naturalist is probably one of the most boring roles within the game because it requires you to sedate and sample animals. This is how you build up enough XP to progress through the ranks, but it can be part of a great money making method with the trader. With the naturalist, there are legendary animal missions which you can unlock. And even though once you go through this mission, it will tell you to sedate and sample the legendary animal, 
you can kill and skin it. Once you skin the animal, you are taken back into free roam where you can then take that over to your trader camp and donate it. And whereas most animal parts will give you a maximum of 30 materials per animal, with the legendary animals, you can get anywhere between 38 to 60 materials depending on the animal in which you are actually donating. So it only requires one or two for you to really progress through the trader. And of course, this makes life incredibly easy. And in all honesty, this really is the biggest selling point. To make things even better, you can, within the trader, unlock a hunting wagon where you can then stack animal goods and it will allow you to stack legendary animals. This makes the trader a lot better, but for this to happen, you need to have the trader and naturalist. And then finally, because you have unlocked the trader, you can then go over to the Moonshiner. The Moonshiner is by far the best role within the game. It's the best in terms of gameplay, it's got the best side missions, it's got the best characters, and it has the best main missions. And not just that, it is also a passive role once you get everything set up. You just need to resupply, add flavor in, which only costs money, and then you can leave it for an hour, come back, and then all of your moonshine bottles are ready to be delivered. The only reason it is last is because the only way for you to get into this, especially as a solo player, is for you to go into the trader first. And it's not worth going for the trader any sooner than what we previously mentioned. And once you do unlock it, it makes sense for you to get the naturalist straight after because you can use the legendary animals to benefit both the trader and also the naturalist. So this does mean the best role within the game is safe till last. But once all of this is done, you've unlocked all of the best content within the game. And this isn't going to be done within a day. It's going to take you a bit of time because each of these roles can be extremely grindy. The easiest one to progress through is the collector just because of the amount of XP that it pays out for every single collectible that you find and also selling full collector sets. The last thing to say for this video is about weapons. There are a lot of weapons available and some of them can be fairly expensive, but really you only need to have four. This is the bolt action rifle, the varmint rifle, the Lancaster repeater, and the bow. Bolt action rifle is used to hunt medium to large animals as well as still being a pretty decent weapon to take on NPCs as well as other players. The varmint rifle is the most useful weapon within the game is there to be used on smaller animals without damaging the carcass and can also be part of the collector role to find bird eggs within trees and also the naturalist to sedate and sample animals. The Lancaster Repeater is the most popular weapon within the game to use against NPCs as well as other players. And finally, with the bow, it is nice to use on medium animals. You can also use it on smaller animals as long as you have the correct arrows and also later you can get explosive arrows which definitely helps when taking on players which are griefing you. This is absolutely everything that you need for starting Red Dead Online and we've gone through the whole process from the tutorial, building through to main missions, going to find different side content and eventually progressing to the roles. We've also given the best weapons that you could be using right at the beginning so that you're not missing out on the content but you're also not spending a lot of money. If you enjoyed this content make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and if you want more tutorials I highly recommend watching this video right here. This video has been selected specifically just for you. YouTube has tracked exactly what you like to watch. They think that this is the perfect video for your viewing. So click that and I hope you enjoy what you're about to watch next.